I don't know how it's possible to have a bad hair day when you have locks, but I'm having one. Um, okay, so <laughs> this video, as you can tell from the title, it is not going to be fun. Because I'm actually able to speak about it now, I've been more open in general about it. So, yeah, okay, um, I don't know where to start. I actually should have wrote an outline, but... I don't know why I didn't want to do that. I just don't want to do that. Um, first off, first things first, if you're a family and you don't like this video, then you're part of this problem of why this continues to happen, to be honest. Um, if you see an issue with me, I actually was going to keep the person's name out of the video, but I realized that's still me doing a like injustice to myself, my other family members, people that go through this and go through worse than what I went through. So why would I be keeping the name? Especially when this person is like known in the um, gospel community. I don't think that's, you know, it's not. And the only reason why I was thinking about it is because like people in my family try to like dumb down the situation for me to like make it seem like basically for me speaking out about it or having my sentiments about this person is not necessarily wrong, but like it kind of gives me the vibe like they think I'm doing too much. and. I don't play when it comes to things like this. Like, I'm not gonna cry in this video. I mean, I hope not. But even like, but that statement made me want to cry just a while ago. Cause like, I don't play when it comes to things like this. I don't. I don't like it. I, I hate it. So, for me to feel like the whole time, when when I explain what I went through, that um, what happened, and then people, some people knowing about it, and then when they find out how I felt about it, and then they try to like basically diminish how, how I felt about the situation it kind of it really did mess me up over the years but it's okay because we're able to talk about it now so that means I got out of the messed up parts of it so um of course with every video ironically I ended up bringing astrology into it because I did find out that astrology uh, astrology actually helped me navigate this so yeah I guess but um I guess I'll start by like where, where what how old was i i don't know how old i was i was very young i know i was in elementary school um far from like graduating i think i was either in third or fourth grade yeah because it was like pretty recent like we had just got to the bronx well not really yeah yeah actually yeah because we didn't stay in the bronx for a while so i had just moved from the moved from harlem to the bronx like 2004 and i think like it was probably three years after that that um I just saw 313 and okay before I even continue I didn't also I also didn't want to tell the story because it has to do with my mother and oh my god I don't want to cry when I said that and for a while for a while like I had her up in my heart for it and sometimes I feel like I still do in certain aspects but I more understand it now, so I don't resent her. Before it was more kind of like resent me, but now it's like I understand. But when you see, when I explain like why, you'll see because I, I'm saying this as a discredit because I'm a disclaimer because I don't want um, anyone to like that knows her, especially or if you don't know her or whatever, just get, whatever it is. I don't want you to like see her put her in a, in a negative light because now to me I just see as my mother is just a child in a woman's body just like how I'm a child in a woman's body like we still have our inner child and our trauma what we went through so whatever she did or did not do for or to me it's I wouldn't I'm not blaming her anymore because it's not her fault so yeah oh my god damn oh yeah I'm probably <laughs> Uh, this is why I put on makeup because I'm like, oh, if I put on makeup, I'm not going to cry. Yeah, joke's on me. I'm just putting that out there, especially for family members who may watch this. This is not to bash my mother. I'm just speaking on my experiences. Maybe if I was telling the story four years ago, it was to bash her. Let's be real. But now it's definitely not. Definitely not. Because she's the same type of, she's going through the same things that every other woman would be going through. Like we have our inner child and our trauma and all those things. So it is what it is. Um. Anyway, on another note though. I am doing this because I actually did a numerology for today when I, I've been thinking about this for a while and ironically I started thinking about it during Sagittarius season this person is a Sagittarius and I've been thinking about it since it started and I'm like okay well 
it's gonna be out i had the first thought actually in scorpio season so i was like oh i guess it's really time to put secrets out there you know because scorpio season but then i'm like uh, something held me back i just didn't want to get to see the scorpio energy i just wanted to keep it to myself and now it finally came to me and we're about to leave sagittarius season so doing it to the bang and i did the numerology uh, as i said i was doing the numerology today and i added up the date and what is today's date adding up to 13. okay all right if you know me enough you already know i'm born in the 13th and, I, and even if it's not about my birthday 13 is a karmic number okay so yeah you reap what you sow that's that's a fact and we're and we're going into saturn area we're going into capricorn season where it's all about karma and we're going to a year, number eight, where it is about karma. So that's one thing. L pay attention to what you do next year because next year is the year of karma. It's also about money and things like that and control and power. But karma is a big thing, okay, number eight. So I think it's just so funny how everything lines up and I feel comfortable to speak, speak about it now and not feel like, Ugh, I don't want nobody to know like what I went through. Because I kind of went in depth on my podcast, which um, I'll post them so you'll kind of see i was actually supposed to post a whole of it all of them but i didn't feel like doing that so but yeah people that listen to my podcast in 2021 you guys know the whole thing like what happened and um, well not the whole thing but enough of what happened yeah pretty much because i was kind of brief with it i don't remember i don't remember but um anyway so back to the story um well the situation whatever I was around however years old you are in third or fourth grade and um, my mom, I'll also put this as a disclaimer, I always had my father in my life. I never grew up not knowing my father. My father's my biggest, my father's the reason why I'm on this channel today so that is enough for you to show like how much of a part he played in my life as especially as a child. Like I would never, I can't like, I, of course I wanted more from him. But and it was only because the only thing I wanted more from him was quality time. Um, that's my love language, and that's why that's my love language because I didn't have that. My mother never really like spent spent time with me. My dad wasn't around, so I just that's like I take it a big deal when if I'm with somebody, and that's what, like my last um, my last video about really breakups and stuff. That's why I like being alone in isolation and whatever, all that stuff and whatever was like the main factor why I left besides, you know, a whole bunch of other shit. Because I, I had to like really grow through that and not, and know how, learn how to like, I don't know, whatever. Basically, but it's a big deal to me. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. So my dad being there, not being there was a big deal, but him being there for me when I could just pick up the phone and call him or if your mom got to like a little something and she took the phone from me I would go down the block and find a pay phone or call my dad like the fact that I can always reach my dad is what has like kept me all these years because that's like it was so important for me so um but he wasn't around so I'll, I'll say that as a disclaimer but I already kind of said in another video that he left because my mom kicked him out because I snitched but they were having problems before so it was really my fault it was just my fault at the moment at that day why he left that moment but probably he would have he probably would have left the next day i don't know so he wasn't there and my mom um as every other single mother would think her children need a father figure in their life i didn't feel that way she felt that way because she wanted help of course as a single mother of course like she did everything up to this day she does everything but i personally didn't feel that way i was actually always like confused like you know all these different people or whatever and it's like i don't really like, I, I honestly, like, my biggest, like, gripe or issue with a lot of people that she dated or, well, it wasn't a lot. It was only, like, two people that she really brought into, like, our home type of thing. Yeah, it was only two people, really. Other people was just, like, I was trying to, they were trying to, like, feel her. Well, she was trying to feel them out, but they weren't it. But I never clicked with any of them. None of them. And the main reason was always, I have a daddy. Like, you're not my dad. You're not my dad. Like, I was always telling them, like, you're not my dad. You're not my dad. So... That was always my big problem, my biggest issue here. So um, one day, I was coming from school. No, we were coming. I think she picked us up from school, and we saw her friend. She. I don't remember. The funny part is I don't remember when and how this guy came into the picture. I don't remember the day. I only remember this one um, memory where, and it's funny because now that I'm looking back on it, I don't see from my point of view. I see it as like I see me and my brother. It's so strange where we're um we're walking to meet him i guess i don't know what we were doing and 
we ran to him and we were like desmond that's his name his name is De his name is desmond white okay his name is desmond white and that's probably the last time i'm gonna say his name in this video because i don't before it used to actually trigger me i didn't actually like saying the name i didn't like seeing the name it just made me feel ick very disgusted so i don't know a little bit of still that is with me kind of because sometimes i do have a problem with saying it but at the time i don't give a shit but right now i just want to say it so much so i'm gonna just say it faster right here in this video um yeah so we ran to me, we were like, you know, his name, we were like, Desmond, and um, and I remember looking at her, and like, she was so happy to see that, but I'm saying this for a reason, I'm gonna get to that, so, um, then we got home, I forgot what happened, Kirsten B, then, a couple weeks later, um, I came home from school, and I saw, like, things were outside, don't credit me on what I'm saying, on, on like, a lot of things, because I may forget certain things like for example I don't know if my mom told me that he was moving in before but I don't think so because honestly that's not really her character and then we are children like she would think like we don't have any say you know so I don't think that she told us that um he was moving in but I remember coming from school because I lived right up the block from my school and I saw all these things on the lawn and I just knew that it was for us because we were in like those private apartments where like it's only three floors I knew it was for the, my third floor. I know it was for us. So, um, wow, well, I actually miss that place. I, I dream about it so often. I wish I could go back. I think I might even build it in the future because that place like, did some things for me. I don't know what it was. But anyway, um, yeah, so I knew it was for us and I, I automatically felt like so, like, I don't know the word, like distraught, I guess it was. I was very, I wasn't happy. I was not happy. And then I went upstairs and I really wasn't happy because I saw that it was really him that was moving in. So, um, fast forward to whatever, uh, he was mo he moved in. And actually, oh my God, I'm stop I'm sorry, 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 go back, go back. Because this is actually very important. Um, when I was younger, I was suicidal. And, oh, wow. That's the first time I'm actually saying that. Oh, I don't actually want to cry about it. Because I actually can't believe, like, I think about it sometimes, but I can't believe that I actually was at that age where I felt like I wanted to kill myself. Like, that's crazy. And I remember the thoughts that I had, like, I was going to hang myself from the window, everything. But I was very, because I had a, my childhood was very, like, I don't know. And a lot of it was me because of, like, what I did. But a lot of what I did is because of the love I didn't receive. So it was like a, it's just so messed up all around, basically, honestly. Like, you know, like that's what I'm saying. Like, my dad was enough for me on the phone. But if he was around, I probably wouldn't have, like, felt the way I, I would have never been suicidal. That's one thing. I would have haven't been suicidal. But, um, yeah. So, this guy, <laughs> I left a note for my mom. And, um, it's actually sad. Because to this day, she actually still do this. But I left a note to my for my mom that I want to kill myself, and I don't know I forgot what else I wrote, but it was like what you whatever you could expect like a child to say and how they feel when they're hurting and like you know they don't feel like they they're loved and everybody hate them whatever and whatnot. Oh my god, I haven't like really. Damn, I'm not trying to cry. Like, I'm trying to get the story out, but it's like I haven't like just spoke about this out loud like the way how I'm doing it now, so it's like very emotional for me. But, especially because I'm in a better place now, but it's like, I can't believe I came from that. It's crazy. But, I told her, I put on the chair, she came up from work, and I knew when she read it, I locked myself in my room. I knew, I think I should get a napkin, hold on. <sighs> so, I knew she read it, because I like, I, I heard her pick up the paper and everything, and then, I don't remember if he came home with her, or he called, or she called him. Either way... He was the one to come into my room and console me from being suicidal. And this is the part that I do always mention sometimes when I talk about suicide to people or whatever. Is that um, <laughs> when he was talking to me, he, like, he, was, he was consoling me. But it wasn't in a way where um, somebody, like a grown person, is consoling a child. Especially... One that if you know you might you like the mother and this child this child might be your stepchild in the future you know how you would console it as like as, a, as if it's your child he was consoling me like he was somebody that he wanted to talk to he was flirting with or whatever because the way how he was rubbing on my hands was very strange and you know it's very sad i noticed that at the moment the same like every single thing that he did when i was young it i noticed every single time but 
at that moment, only that moment in particular, because I was so like in the dark space and he was literally the only person that came and spoke to me, I felt like I was loved. I felt like, okay, well, it's all right if he touched my hand like this and he's rubbing on my hand and, and my leg or whatever. It's all right. It's okay because he's telling me it's okay and I shouldn't go on and kill myself and God loves me and all these different things and everything. So... I saw everything wrong with it, but I didn't say anything about it because it's like, I, I, it was like I was so confused, like, you know? So, there's that. Um, and, it, like, I'll never forget, like, he had this fuzzy hat on. He just, I'm sorry, but he even dressed like a pedophile. I don't know how pedophiles dress, but he just, like, he just gives me, like, that's what, like, that's just how he, like, I don't know. It, it was very interesting. My door is open. Hold on. Oh, I'm hungry. I don't know why I do things without eating first. And then I complain that my belly be grumbling on the damn camera. Yeah, at least one cashew. Anyway. As if that doesn't do anything. Then, I don't know how um, he got in the picture. Besides, like like I said, when he moved in. But he did. Um, he was living with us. It's going to be very choppy because you know, this is a traumatic situation. So I literally blocked out a lot of things. Like, I don't remember a lot of stuff until I talk about this. So I don't know what may come out or what not, what may not. But I will tell the ones that, like, really stuck with me and made me disgusted. So um, one time, well, before everything, before he even did anything, um, there was always times, like, I can tell people was watching me. Everybody can tell. But most people, like... They're not really aware of that. And I'm hyper aware. Like, I know the minute you glance at me. I know when you look at me. So, he will always, do, like, be staring at me or whatever. Mind you, let's remember, let's remember that I'm not a teenager yet. I'm very young. And staring at me in a way that's weird. But even, even if it wasn't a weird way, it's, like, the fact that you're staring at me. And I, I mean, like, literally, like, like creep creep wise like you need woman you guys know what it, what i mean how a creep would stare at you that's exactly how he used to, how he used to do it so he would stare at me and then i would be like because you know, like i said i was bad when I, when I wasn't bad i was just very feisty i had an attitude like i was always like you know da -da -da -da, but because these are the reasons why though <laughs> like i had these issues because of how i felt inside and what i wasn't receiving so i was just very like easy to pop off and easy to like you know and one reason people don't like me today is because of what I'm doing right now. I'm always speaking my truth. Nobody liked hearing my truth from my child. Somebody, if so, if somebody just told me that my old landlord didn't like me because he literally said, I'm too outspoken. And I know that's the reason why. I used to tell him that all the time. I used to say all the time, like, because he'll talk my shit and I'm right here. Or you'll say this and that, but I'm right here. Come and speak to me. Okay, like I'm, we're all grown here, or you're, you're telling lies. Like I'm gonna tell you about yourself. I'm gonna sit here and make you just tell, make up shit about me. Like I'm, I'm gonna tell you about yourself. So he ain't like that was too outspoken, or if, even if it wasn't about me, just in general about like how he is. Like I was always gonna be the person. Like anywhere I go, I'm always gonna be the person that's gonna talk some shit. And people don't like that. It is what it is. I, I don't care because I'm glad that I'm, I'm like that and I don't hold things back. Because I would like my kids to not hold things back. So, um, yeah. So. It was always like a, you know, I was like, mm, why you look at me like that or whatever, or he feel a, he'll get a certain way, like just move on or, or move away or something like that. So one day, um, this is the first time I think he did something strange. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was the first time. One day I was playing Sims on the computer, and I think it was like Sims 2 or some shit, I think it would have to be Sims 2. And I'm like, you know, in my game, and I'm so engrossed in this, y'all you know I love, well if you don't know, but I love Sims, so... I'm very like into my game when I'm playing Sims, but I feel this man standing in the kitchen watching me. So I look and I'm like, I'm like, I, I forgot what I said to him. I said something to him, but I can't remember what happened. I can't remember. That. This one of my freaking sucks, but it's okay. I don't have to tell the whole thing because it's not really a good story, so I don't have to remember. But I don't know. But basically, I, I think it was that same time or the same day we were having a conversation about something. He was talking to me about something. And then he was about to leave, and but he was in he was next to me, and this dude, like right when he was talking to me, like in the middle of talking to me, he just kisses me on my cheek, like just like kisses me on my cheek and then continue to talk, to, like continue talking. I found that so weird, and not only did I find it so weird, I was so disgusted because I'm like, first of all, don't put your dirty ass lips on me. 
Do not put your, your lips on me. I don't know where they've been. I don't even know you like that. And even if I didn't know you like that, don't kiss me without my permission. Don't give me no, don't touch me without my permission. And it's the fact that you did it, that even as my young self, I took it, I was like, you just wanted to like do that so bad. You just like, like, it was just like, mwah. And blah, 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 blah. It was like, blah, 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 blah. Like, who does that? That was, it, 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 was, it was so weird. So freaking weird. So, I was just, stunned and I just stood there I didn't even like continue talking I was just like there like and then he left and I don't even know what I did after that I don't even think I even said anything I don't even know as as much as I was outspoken a lot of this stuff I didn't say anything because of like the same reason why a lot of people don't say anything when they're in worse situations than I was like we just feel like people are not gonna believe them and, and for a time nobody did when I started talking about certain shit so it is what it is but it, it's like I don't know. It, I don't know. I don't know. That's why I'm very bothered when it comes to people that was like, oh, why didn't you speak up before? Or why didn't you say anything before? Or why do you want to do this now? Why do you want to assume not? Why does it, why is it about, why, why can't you understand that it's not about timing? It's about when somebody's comfortable. Like, it, I don't, I don't really, I don't know. It just always bothered me. People that say things like that, I, I look at you side at, sideways because like, are you a predator as well? Are you a pedophile as well? Are you a creep as well? Because you don't have to be underage, it's just you could just be a creep. Are you strange? Another time, I was, um, we were having a conversation about something. Because one thing about me, even though I felt this way, I'm always, especially when I was a child, oh my god. People pleaser, always open to like forgiving, just like, okay, it's whatever, blah, blah, blah. But, I, but one thing about me, I'm keeping it everything in the back of my mind, though. That don't mean nothing. That don't mean that I forget. It just means that I get over it and I'm just like, oh, whatever. But I, I, I remember every single thing. So I'm tallying up every single thing that, that makes me weird from you. But I'm also tolerating you now because when well, you live with me, clearly, you look like my mom doesn't like you. So what can I do? So one time we're having a conversation about something. I don't remember what it was. And, and this time I know actually that I was really mature from a young age because the conversation was actually a very like grown conversation. But thinking about it, like why would you be having this conversation with me? Especially about, about especially when it comes to what he said. So, my mom was waiting for him to um, pick her up from the train station so he could walk with her or whatever. Um, he's there talking to me. And I keep reminding him in the middle of the conversation, like, oh, you know, mom's waiting for you, mom's waiting for you. So then he, he'll say, like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, but let, me say, let me say this one thing or whatever. And he'll continue talking. And then he made a point, like, I don't know, I do not remember what we were talking about. I only remember what the hell he said, which was, oh, like, for example, Let's say, oh, let, let's say, um, Mr. Me want you or something like, me want you. He was saying to me, like, like, he's saying to me, like, let's say that I want you. And I was so disgusted by that comment that I said, mom's waiting for you. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he finally actually left. And I think he did that because, well, it was actually a good amount of time that he was really just standing there talking to me. But I think he did that because he got the sense that I was so disgusted by that comment. Because why would you say that to a child? Why would you say, oh, Oh, uh, let's me want you. I don't want to put that in my fucking head. Like that's disgusting. That's even just saying it now. I'm just so I'm like I'm. I can. I'm sitting there in the in the vision. Like it. It just made me feel so like oh my god. So oh boy, this is where astrology comes into place. Cause when I when I I might, I might actually get to that at the end. I don't want to talk about that right now yet. So. From that comment, uh, like, I was watching him more, like, okay, you're strange for real. And well, he was watching me more than I was watching him. All you know, he did was stare at me and whatever. So then um, I became a teenager. Um, we were One thing, we were always having issues. Me and my mom were always having issues because of me and him always having issues. And now when I mean me and him, I mean me having issues with him. Because I don't like, don't talk to me a certain way or don't tell me this and that or... Like, you know, certain things that he would do, and then in the back of my head, it's like, I don't give a shit, because you're a freaking creeper at the end of the day, so I don't give a shit. Like, I, I really didn't care. I was actually, I was, he was the only person that I really, really, really was, like, like, sizing up, like, I talking to him how I felt like it, or whatever. One time he took away my PlayStation, and I went crazy. Like, I think, I don't know if I was beating on his back. I don't think so. I feel like I was physical, but I don't think I was. I think I was thinking about being physical. But... I know I followed behind him, like, to give my shit back. I'm like, my father my father bought that for me, not you. Don't don't touch myself. Like, what's wrong with you? And I think it's because my mom told me, um, my mom told me to take it out because we weren't sleeping or whatever. But that don't mean, but don't. <laughs> that shit just triggered me. Because, like, don't touch my shit. Like, 
don't touch my stuff you're a creep and you're not my father my dad bought this for me not you so don't do that so i was just like it was, oh my god so much shit so things like that so when i got older it got even more because like you know i'm, I'm becoming a teenager and you know, my mouth is really popping off now i'm really telling you more shit about yourself or whatever what i don't like or what you need to do from or not get away or get away from me or what like you know or whatever and she didn't like that like because to my mom it was like about it was always about respect and treating people with respect no matter what or whatever and i get that and it's funny that she teaches me, she teaches me that but there are certain things that like honestly she was only big on that when it came to people who that she who she was with and yeah yeah that's that's it and only like minuscule people that like in our family members like or people that we were around that she felt like i was giving an attitude to but when it came to people that she was dating that she was very very big on that like one time um i, I don't know what happened but we had a roommate and that roommate or oh, that i found that actually ended up being really jealous of my mom they didn't even like her so it makes sense but she snitched and basically was saying some shit like she told her that i thought that he was ugly um and some other stuff because it was me and the roommate's daughter i think that was talking i don't know that's what i don't credit me on these because i don't remember a lot of stuff but i could remember like certain things of situations but either way she heard that i said he was ugly and this is like in, before I became a teenager, like when we were still living in the Bronx before we moved to Mount Vernon where he used to live. So we packed up and moved where he used to live and I was really bothered by that. But before we did that, it was a big issue. And one time, I'll never forget this, she called me into the room and literally everybody was just standing there like watching the whole thing go down. Like I'll never forget, like people were outside or whatever. And um, she was, the, I remember, I forgot what she said, but the last words I remember that she said was, oh, um, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. And he's a king in my eyes. So when you call him ugly, wah, 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 and she started like wailing on me with the belt, like crazy, just beating me crazy. And I felt so like, <laughs> it's funny now, honestly, like all my beating moments, but that one wasn't funny because it was like, while I'm getting beat on, I was just thinking like, wow, this is all for a man. Like that's a creep that I don't like, that I, I feel like I'm justified to call him ugly because his ugliness from the inside manifested outside so to me he like honestly he's the only person in my life i can really honestly say and i still feel like wrong for saying it because i think that they're very beautiful in their own way to me but he's the only person in my life that i can say that i would like when convince conviction called ugly because it's just how it i don't know like i don't know 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 anyway um so i don't know i forget that she beat me for calling him ugly and for like giving him like problems or whatever in case it be whatever so then i became a teenager we had more bigger issues at one point she called my dad and she br put me in a cab brought me all the way to harlem and i lived with him for a good while probably like what two months or a month or so? i think it was two months i don't know because school had ended by the time i left him it was summertime time when i had left but it was like school was about to i don't remember the time frame i really don't i wish i could remember or had something to remi remind me because i had a great time that time i had a great time with my dad that time. like i'll never forget those moments yeah so she brought me over there and we were there for a while i still didn't really tell my dad what was going on and to this day i really like n t at this moment in this day i'm realizing that everything happened for a reason the way how it did that i didn't speak up or case may be and i think honestly it's either I had the thought or subconsciously I felt like it would happen. But I didn't want... Yes, what am I talking about? Because I know my father. I didn't want him to get in trouble. I did not want to go visit my father in Guyana. Well, I, I would have loved that. But I didn't want to do that because he got deported. Because he killed or, or hit, like hurt somebody. Because my dad is like that. Like, and it, oh my God. If I had told him any like a spark of what was going on. Like, here are the things that he had to do for family members, like, to, to protect us and protect his, you know, his family and his, his sisters and everything or whatever. It, imagine if it came to his daughter. I don't, like, he would have really, I, I think he would have killed him, honestly. I think he would have, honestly. He probably, I don't know, maybe he would have, he probably has more self-discipline now, definitely. But I don't know what he would have done. So I think that's a big part of why I didn't say anything because I know that it wouldn't have been good for everybody. And then I would have been upset now that you sent my father back to Ghana because you're such a freaking creep. Like I would have been mad at everything. I, I would have been mad at my mom. I would have been mad at a lot. A lot of things would have happened that it just wouldn't. Ha it would have been like a whole bag of uh, can of worms, honestly. 
So I think that's the main reason why I didn't say anything. Because it's like, I'm not going to jeopardize my father's, you know, life for this piece of shit, you know. So, um, I ended up going back because they moved to Mount Vernon. I didn't move with them. Uh, I wasn't there to see them move. So I think that's why I have such a connection to the old house in the Bronx. Because I didn't, like, get to, like, say bye to it. So, we moved from, they moved from there. And then I got to Mount Vernon. Hated it. Hated it. Hated it. Because the main thing is that her room, their room was connected to my room. So you have to, for them to leave and go to the bathroom, they have to go through our room. That's really crazy when you think about it. Like, and it was, it was not, like, like I said, I just sweep shit under the rug. I, I adapt easily to a lot of situations that just, you know, is it is what it is. But when I sit and think about it now, it's like, that's crazy. That's crazy. But, um, yeah, so, I'm sharing my brother, and I gotta, um, see this, you know, I, I deal with them, um, coming in and out the room, whatever, well, him, really. So then when I moved there, that's when things were strange, er, because, like I said, I'm, a, I'm, I was a teenager now, well, going into a teenager, I was graduating, I was going into eighth grade, and I graduated, I actually just found my, um, prom dress last night. Um, for eighth grade and after that high school started and I realized a lot more strange things like uh, like the staring was even worse now because I'm growing um I can't really say much about this because honestly I don't I really I blocked out a lot of things honestly I, really, <laughs> I blocked out so much that I can't remember like the most important ones, like what happened or case it be. But whatever. Um this is so hard. I didn't think it was gonna be hard. Um let me think. I gotta go back in the vault real quick. Maybe I can look at pictures. I don't have pictures here in my wall though that like helps me remember. What I do have I do have pictures of him though in the background. Like I have picture I'm gonna put it up because I don't get why would I not? I'm gonna put them up because there's some there's there's a, I have a lot of pictures of him in the background. I think I deleted a, a lot of them though, unfortunately. But there's a few that I think I still have, and he was in the background. And you could just tell like the creepiness, like you could just see it on the person's face, like and the fact that you're there, you know, like I don't know. Anywho, um, so. Let me think. I can't even know. I don't know the chronological order for any of these events or anything. Um, let's just say... Okay. I'm going to say the, la the biggest one for, the, for last because I did recently find out, found out about it. Find out about it. So, um... Yeah, we had our issues or whatever in the new place and... One thing he was always saying to me was, oh, you never give me time of the day. You never give me time of the day. And I never, I always hated that saying. Because I'm like, nigga, what do you mean by that? And why are you saying that to me? Like, you're one of the guys in my high school right now. Like, that want me to, like, give them a, a chance or whatever. You're always saying that. I never give you time of the day. Never give you time of the day. It never stood right to me. And the way how he would come off or things that he would say... I wish I could remember because it's like very important for me to say, but I mean, it doesn't matter because just the fact that like how I'm explaining who he was and what he did is more important to me, like in getting it out there because I don't, uh, I guess I don't, I don't fuck with shit like that. I don't like things like this, but, um, he would like the way how he would do all the things he would treat me more like he wants, like I'm supposed to be his wife more than my mother. And that's what always stood out to me. That it was very strange. Like it was like, I was like a, a, a girlfriend to him and it was like i don't know like it was oh my god this made me feel so disgusted saying that like i got i thought i got over it that but it's just nasty so um let me think i feel like i'm missing a lot of things like one time my birthday i think it was my 17th birthday yeah my 17th birthday um I mean, I was lit because my mom didn't put, she, she allowed me to, to do blonde in my hair, so, you know, so I was like, oh, holy we want it. you know, like, we was lit, you know, but that was too grown, I guess, because 
like from that moment I saw the sh the shift in how he looked at me no it was 16 actually I'm talking about my 17th birthday but it was 16 like where the shift happened for him because there was a comment one time where I was in a room he was talking about some shit about I don't know what he was talking about I was in their room looking for something in my mom's closet and this dude is gonna say Oh, I love, one thing about him, I'll never, I'll never remember the conversation that leads to the bizarre shit that he says, because it's always the bizarre shit that stands out more than conversation. So I, so I don't know what we were talking about before, but all I don't know is that he was like, oh, <laughs> I like girls sixteen and up. <laughs> like he used to laugh like that, a little dumb laugh like that, and I had just turned sixteen. I had just turned sixteen. I mentioned, it, I know I mentioned this on my podcast, and in my head I'm like, what the hell? And I literally, I think I literally said like, that's disgusting, like. That's weird, or you're, or you're weird like that, or something like that. And, like, I could see on his face that he was taken aback by my, by my response or something. Like, he didn't think I was going to, he thought I was going to laugh. I don't know why I was thinking I was going to laugh. But, no, that's disgusting. Weird. And I, I left. I walked out of the room. And I don't think I told my mom that time. I don't know. I don't know. There's so much things. And the thing is that he was, it wasn't even only me. It wasn't even only me. It was just why I'm talking about it. I'm mainly talking about this shit because my little cousins were affected by this. I don't like that. I'll put this out there right now. I'll just say now instead of like forgetting at the end. Um, my cousins all told me how stories like my one of them could even come and tell her tell you herself. Like she's very blunt and she'll say a lot of shit. That when they were younger and all taking a shower together because you know when we were kids you do things like that. Like I mean like probably five six seven or um yeah I think the youngest was about five four five or five I think she was about five or six I don't know either way young ch young children. And they're all taking a shower. This dude's this dude opens the door, looks at them for a while, for a while, and then closes it. Or I don't remember if he closed it or not. But either way, the fact that uh, he looked at opened the door, stared at them, little girls in the shower, and then he leaves. And I just found out about this what two years ago, last year. Was the last year anything was happening with my other cousin? Mm, was it? Yes, it was, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think just last year I found out about all of this stuff. And I was so disgusted because, oh my God, I was telling you, everything happened for a reason. Because if I knew that, a lot of shit would have been different. I probably would have been in juvie. I probably would have been in juvie and went to jail after. Yeah, went to prison after. And I would have been smiling because I know this dirt, dirty ass freaking system. They run on child. You know what? whatever I don't even know if I can say on this channel because I think YouTube is in on it too but they this this um company this um, this company that yeah that too but this country forget about the country this whole world that's one of those that that is the biggest money maker besides to me big pharma is trafficking child so I knew that if something happened I would have ended up in a situation where I'm not in the justified part because it's like they don't they don't want to see that why, why would i want that so i could go more and, and do more to like you know get a revenge on on all the pedophiles yeah, they don't want that they want pedophiles to help them make the money no uh, you know but anyway so um yeah that just it was just disgusting it was a lot more things but he was i wasn't the only one it wasn't only my cousins either. I had an older cousin that went through the same thing. I had a um, the roommate that I mentioned that I was cool with, that I lived with when I was younger for a good while. Um, she was also a Pisces and went through the same thing I did. It looked like with him. But she looked like she liked the attention. So I came and speak on her situation. I'm going to get to that in, the, in later on. Like what we, the last thing, the last bizarre thing that happened with him. So after he made that comment, I was just disgusted. I, like I really, sort of really like, I don't know. There was a lot of times I came home I didn't even want to be home. But where, where was I supposed to go? I didn't know what else to do. So I'm just like, alright, whatever. It is what it is. But I never wanted to really be home. And especially that there was a time that he, my mom was always working. And he was the only one that was really working. Like he would be selling his gospel CDs. I hope I mentioned that in the beginning that he's a gospel singer. Because if I didn't know, that's the most important thing y'all need to know. This is my dad. This is somebody that, that is in the church. But we already know that that's how it happens. Like this is not, it's not, it's not an uncommon thing. Which is crazy. You know, but if he's not selling hat pocketbooks, he was selling gospel CDs or whatever, or selling something or whatever and whatnot. So, um, 
it made me so fucked up. I don't even know. <laughs> like, I just don't know how to, like, continue talking or what to say. Because I'm just... I'm just bothered. But, um, yeah. So, um... Then, yeah, we became 17. And the vibes were shifted or whatever. And on my 17th birthday, I went to Hard Rock Cafe. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to Hard Rock Cafe with my friends. And... Um, what happened? Oh, I need I needed a, a drop a ride to the train station. She was dropping me because at the time my mom didn't have her license, so she wasn't doing that. She was learning to drive at the time. And this guy is gonna. I went to the back seat because now thinking about it, actually I should be comfortable going in the front seat, but that's not me with him. So I went to the back seat. Like it was a natural thing for me to go to the back seat. He goes, "Oh, um, why, why are you sitting?" Um, fuck, what did he say? He said something about basically like, um, uh, like, oh, I'm not like a chauffeur or something like that. And then I, if I'm not missed, I don't know if he made the comment because like again, like I can't remember so much of the freaking trauma. And and then he's sick, so I don't know if he actually said this or I thought about. Or why would or if or I thought about like oh you're saying this because this is what you're thinking I don't know if he made a comment about like him wanting to look like he has a girlfriend in the front seat or whatever but either way that was what the comment that's what the comment gave when he was talking about like oh sitting in the back seat or why not I sit in the front or whatever I feel like he said it I feel like he said it I mean nobody's gonna think to ever document this type of shit but I wish I had documented all this stuff because it's like. I don't know, but either way, it rubbed me the, the wrong way. I couldn't wait to get the frick out of the car. Like, I was just so disgusted. I'll show you pictures of what I looked like or whatever. Because it was just like, I can see. I can I can see. Like, it was grown to me. Because, yeah, that outfit to me was grown for a 17-year-old. Like, a, oh my God. I want to talk about 17-year-olds now. I want to talk about them now. But me and my age and being a teenager, I felt like I was very modest certain, with certain things, how I dress, especially because my mother was a Christian, it's a Christian, and she's more modest. It's not even about her religion. It's just how she carried herself. So I carried myself a certain way or whatever. Like, yeah, we're going to, you know, be hot and shit sometimes or whatever, but it's like, we're still going to be modest with our, you know, like, I'm not going to be a whole, like, what we call a sketto in Jamaican terms. Like, I'm not going to be a local, you know, local gal outside with just, like, short top skirts and um, things I show up like, yeah, I can't. That's not my, that's not my personality. And I felt like very strange that day, you know, on my, on my own birthday. I felt very disgusted and weird or whatever. But nothing new. My, birth my birthday is always something. I don't think there's ever a birthday I had that was normal. <laughs> ever. Ever. Besides this year. But this year doesn't count either. It wasn't really normal because of how I felt inside. I was happy, but because of what was going on with, like, certain things, like, it wasn't normal because it was a transformation for me. So, yeah, it wasn't... <laughs> What's it called? Anyway, um, so then what happened? I'm skipping a lot, but it is what it is. Like, I think I, I said enough for you to understand the person that he is. So I don't think it's necessary to say things that I, I forgot. But what I will, I do remember now, prom came around. So I had a best friend that um also was a Pisces, and. She was younger than me though, like when you're one grade younger. So she came over to my house to help me get ready for prom. But I was in Brooklyn getting my makeup done, I think. Was it? Yeah, yeah, I was getting my makeup done at the time and my friend was getting her hair done, I think. I don't know, because I went to prom with me and an um in a friend. Wait, wait, yeah. So she went there, because you know it's normal, she's comfortable being in my house, nothing new. We always be in my house dancing and you know, having fun and shit. When he's not there, when he's not there, and whatever. So, this particular time, though, he was there. So, he goes and whatever. And I told I told my friend, like, about this dude. Like, I told her, like, you know, how he is and shit. So, she tells me, I think she texts me while, while we're there. Or, I'm pretty sure she told me while I was at, in Brooklyn. She was telling me, like, what was happening or whatever. Or while we were in the room getting dressed. Either way, she told me what happened. How she's eating her beef patty. And he keep looking at her and staring at her the same way how she, and I know she not lying because why would you lie about it? But it's the same exact way how I experienced it. Like, this is how he would look at me. Like, he'll be, he'll always sit in a, if I'm, if I'm in the same vicinity as him, he will always make sure that whatever he's doing, he is in a position where he can see me. 
So he's not going to sit on the couch and watch TV in the corner where you can sit on the couch and watch TV in the corner or like on the other side where it's not showing in the kitchen. If I'm in the kitchen and I'm sitting by the table doing my homework or eating or doing whatever, he has to be at the end of the couch where the, like the, leg co the part comes off where you can lie down or whatever. But you're sitting at the edge looking at the TV so you can look at me, turn to your left and look at me when you feel like it. So he was always like, it'll be like, let me tell you right now, he'll always be doing this. <laughs> so triggering remember this shit man let me like this like him looking away is me staring at him because i can i look at you like what the fuck are you looking at me for so but other times it'll be like literally like this and imagine you're not even looking but you feel you know he's looking at you Like, he couldn't help himself so much that even when I would look at him, he would look away and look back at me at the same exact moment and keep doing that. So it was, it was just such a bother to me. And she told me that this is what he's doing or whatever. So this is important for, what I'm, for the next part of the story. So Because I think that's pretty much it before we get to, like, the parts of the, the things that I found out after my mom divorced him finally. So one night I'm sleeping. Like I said, I could feel everybody staring at me. Even in my sleep, I could, I would get, jump out of my sleep if you're looking at me, if you're, if you're staring at me in my sleep. Not if you just glance at me, you're like, oh, she's so cute. But if you're just standing there, if you're standing at me for a long ass time, I could tell you're looking at me and I'll get up. So in my dream was telling me that somebody's looking at me and I'm gonna get up or some shit. So I'm sleeping in a deep sleep and I get up because I, first of all, it's not only that I feel somebody staring at me, but something touches my foot. I don't know to this day what the hell touched my foot because he claims that something fell off of my um of my bed or whatever and he was putting it on my bed but then if that's the case why did I wake up and I see you staring st standing at the door looking at me if you were going to the bathroom and you're just picking something up off of my why are you looking staring at me and the craziest thing is that I slipped with the sheet over my head it was it's just a habit but I, I was not gonna let go of that habit when I was living with him hell no so what are you really even looking at? Like, you know, you're that much of a computer, you're just staring at a figure in a sheet? So I got him like, what are you doing? I think I said like, what the hell are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Like, what, what's going on? Whatever. And I think that's what he said or whatnot. Very next morning, I to my mother. Because I'm like, no, this is fucking strange. I'm not doing this shit no more. I'm not, I'm not doing it. And first thing that she says to me is, am I sure? So <laughs> I was so bothered and taken aback. I was like, what do you mean am I sure? I'm like, yeah, so like, well, I'm going to make shit up. Like, um, I was bothered by that statement, honestly, because going back to the, the, the girl that I used to live with, she caught him multiple times being weird with her. I don't know if it was multiple times, but she caught him being weird with her. Like one time she walked into her room and she, he, the girl looked like she was leaving, but he's holding onto her hand like this. And like, he's like, oh, and he's, I think he was sitting on the edge of her bed and He's holding to her hand and she's leaving. And mind you, the girl's my age too. She's not older than me. She's well, she's one year older than me, but she's my age. So she said she found something weird about that. And I always heard that story growing up, but she never would, would like, it looked like she didn't want to go into details around me or she'll say certain things that just like, I don't know. And I'm going to get to that also. That's what I found out. So, um, oh God. Boy, I... I I didn't think this would like really make me that that uncomfortable, but sorry you knew that he was a weirdo from like doing little things like that, or whatever. Or him calling my cousin, who um, I think she's five years older than me, and like just talking to her. We was not we was not like that. My family was not like that with him. It was like we if we see you, hey, how you doing? Blah blah blah. We talk to you, whatever. If, especially for family, like for holidays or whatnot. But it was never a situation where I'm going to pick up the phone and call you and talk to you because we cool like that. Like, you know, no, no. I'll put it this way. I never, up to this day, that man was never my stepfather. And it's crazy because legally he was, but he was never, ever my stepfather. That man was literally my mom's husband. Like, I never, see, I never seen him as a stepfather figure. Never. It didn't ever feel like it. Nothing like that. Nothing. So it wasn't like a type of, like a type of like case where, oh, now I have a new dad and everybody, and he's so cool. And now everybody seems like, oh, uncle, whatever, whatever. No, no. And the worst part is that I hated is that the, the same three girls that are younger than me, 
when they were like babies like younger they used to love him like they were the same way how you know and i don't understand that because i guess pedophiles kind of attract children in a way or maybe he him specifically specifically because i don't get it how these kids are always in, are able to be in these situations with them and yes children could be naive but we all they also know like you know bad from wrong so i don't know what it is about people that are predators or pedophiles or creeps or whatever because you don't have to be a pedophile you could just be a creep in general about women or whatnot but we're talking about pedophilia so yeah things like that and they like they, they're able to do things to, to these kids because these kids end up feeling like you know a sense of trust with them so i don't really i don't know but it bothered me knowing that they used to always like oh that's me and like you know and he'll always have them like hold on playing with them or whatever whole time you lust enough of them whole time so oh my god she makes you feel so disgusted huh. Like, I, like, now I want to cry, and it's not from you saying this at this point. It's actually from anger from that point, from that aspect, because it's not even about me. Like, it's about my little cousins. Like, I I don't feel so violated, and this is the point that I'm getting to. So, oh, God. So, yeah, so my mom, and that day, they were, always, they were already having issues, so the divorce was, like, coming to a close. Like, it was coming right there. And... That day, she told me she brought him to a park and spoke to him about it or whatever. And he was like, what? That people here put me in that jail. Put me in that liar. Going off crazy. And she said that, that, um, what was it? That reaction alone gave her her answer. Because it's like, why are you doing the most? Like, you was staring at me. You did whatever, some weird shit with me with my foot like picking up some shit and put it I don't care what the fuck you was doing either way you was being a weirdo it don't matter you was a weirdo you are a weirdo like let's be real so even if you even if you did not do anything you did something you, you said things like you're you're strange because I don't I didn't have to tell her that but I did I could have told her that and talked about all the other shit that I that you know that he has said or done and honestly I think I have and I'm pretty sure that she used to laugh it off yeah I think that's what it was I, I just had to see it's coming back to me Certain things I would say, and she would literally laugh it off. I think I told her the 16-year-old comment, and she found it funny. So, I don't, I don't know. It was, I don't know. But, either way, that gave her her answer. And they divorced some soon after. Um, she told me that um, she actually prayed with him. And was like, oh, I think you have a problem. Like, you, you like children. You're a pedophile. And I, I'm pretty sure she said he admitted it. Yeah, it's either he didn't, he didn't, it's either he admitted it or he said he stood silent as like an agreement to her or something like that. I don't remember, but they prayed about it. Okay, it ain't work. No prayer didn't work for that. Did not work for that. Because that same time too when she brought him to the park and mentioned it, she also I think brought up my friend. And uh, like the whole situation with her, with, with um, whatever. And she was like, oh, yeah, and um, Tony Ann said this and that, blah, blah, blah. whatever. I mean, it is what it is. And he's gonna say, "Oh, oh, that picnic! That, oh, what, 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 what man look at that picnic for? She look like a man. She look like a man." And I think my mom said it too, but even me, and I think even my friend had said it. Why would that be your focus? Why are you commenting on a teenage child? Why are you talking, why are you commenting on a child looking like a man? So you, to me, in other words, if she didn't look like a man, what would you say then? But to me, it, it gave, like, a guy that tried to catcall you and you get rejected. So now all of a sudden, oh, that's what you're oh, getting anyway. Oh, da, 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 da. So because, like, you're mad that she said something about it and you found it. You, you're mad that she found it strange that you kept staring at her like you do to me. And you insult her and say that she looked like a man. That just shows that you are staring at her. Because then how would you, how else would you know that she looked like a man, honestly, as well? Okay? Like, let's be for real. So I found that comment very, very alarming as well. Very strange. Like he was going in, like explaining like how, how her face is and everything. I'm just like, okay. I think that's what he said. I don't remember the whole thing, but I know that he like said like like one or two comments about like her physique and how she looks like a man or whatever, and, or she and she sounds like a man as well. something like that. Th that was just very like you know. And I was and plus because my best friend at the time, so I'm like, don't talk about her like that. I know she does not. Don't do that. Don't be disrespectful. Like, if we're being real here, you look like a fucking ogre. 
okay and he, he still does that's what i'm saying like honestly I, he's the only person i can say in my life that i i feel bad for saying it because it's like oh you know you should call people ugly but it's like you are ugly your your insides match your outsides so um yeah so then so much shit so much shit okay so yeah this is chronological because now we're moving on to like when we move so then we moved to queens and he helped us move even though our mom divorced me and everything whatever so he was bringing us like to place back and forth or whatever or whatnot and one night he was coming from a concert and he was going from i think he was coming from a banquet and he was going to a concert either or it don't matter which one it was either way he was, go he was coming from a church function a religious function and going to a religious function after so um he was picking us up from from queens or I think he had brought us from Mount Vernon. Yeah, he brought us from Mount Vernon to bring us up to Queens so we could go back to Mount Vernon to sleep or whatever because we wasn't like sleeping at the house yet. So my mom, she was doing something for him like she her business thing at the time, she could help him like lower his bill or something like that or whatever. I forgot what it was that she was helping him do. But she was like, oh, let me see your iPad. So I'm sitting in the back seat, like in between both of them. And I'm like, where's my brother? Oh, he was in he was in Harlem, my aunt. And I'm like, where's my brother and all this stuff? Um, and like, yeah, my brother was lucky. He was not he was not there for a lot. Like, I wish I had that outlet. I mean, I could have, but it just wasn't for me because my where he was at, my cousins were there and like they're boys. So I was like, I don't want to you know be around them and be up in people's face as well. And he's already there, so I just if that wasn't never honestly. It's not even about that to me. I'm never somebody that want to burden anybody. It don't matter like. You know, even if you invite me, I'm gonna feel like, yeah, I don't know. And maybe that's the thing growing up with me, because everybody always felt like I was a burden. So I just felt like I don't want to continue that. I just stick to myself. So I was sitting in the back seat, and she opens his iPad. And when she opened his iPad, the picture, there was a picture of the girl that I used to live with zoomed in. And I mean zoomed as much as you, like, all the way in on her face. When I tell you, my mouth was open. My mouth dropped open. And I was just like, and my mom, this is literally her, with the iPad. It, and she was taken aback by it too because she froze for a little bit. She froze for a little bit. It was just like, and then she just swipe out and did what she had to do. And nobody said anything. Nobody said anything. Because what she going to say? What she going to say? I was so disgusted by that. For the girl. But then not really because, I mean, I, I still I still am. But as in, when I'm saying not really, I mean, like, because I found out that they were taking advantage of this. So they didn't care that he was lusting off of, of her, 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 her and her mother. It seemed like they didn't business because they were using him for a lot of different shit, as, even down to her college, it looked like. So that's what I heard. I don't know if it's true, but that's what I heard. We didn't say anything. I was so shocked. I was so shocked. I told everybody named Mama. Everybody, me and my mom told about that. Cause I'm like, that's freaking crazy. I think I told her. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. And yes, I did. Oh my God, I'm forgetting so much shit. I definitely did tell her. And she definitely didn't take it in a way that I think I thought she would have took it. Because now I'm understanding that. Yeah, so that it must be some truth to that stuff that I heard then. Because she really didn't give a shit, honestly. That's what she gave off. I was like, I am. Well, okay. Like, I think she laughed at, at it, actually. So, and she said that's. I think she said that was weird, but she laughed at it. Like it wasn't like a, Ew, what the hell type of thing to me. It wasn't like a, oh, let me go block him, ASAP No Rocky, because I block. One time, I think I, it was when I was still in the house with him. I think I, when they were still together, he tried to friend request me. I blocked that so quick. I blocked him so quick because it's like I knew. Foreshadowing I'm about to talk about that really broke me, but it's like I knew what he was friend requesting me for. Like, honestly, he's the reason why I didn't want to be on social media. Like, he's the reason why I didn't want to do things like this now. But I had to just grow out of it because it's like, what can I... You can't control people. You can't control people and their, and their weird shit, honestly. 
So, oh God, shit is crazy. Um, so yeah, so then we get back. Um, I don't remember what happened after that. So then we get to 2019. Was it 2019 that I found this thought? Or 18? I don't know. Pretty, re pretty recent though. And my uncle was here from Jamaica and he had a girlfriend and he had just left he just he had, he had just went back to Jamaica at the time so he had a girlfriend who was going the next day but she was like chilling with us or whatever so my mom was like telling stories because I think she was showing her the wedding album and everything like that and she started talking about him in general so I'm sitting up there listening, you know, my nosy self and just like, you know, being here, you know, for the, you know, listen to the, well, I was on the mix anyway already, but they should just, she just started talking about the whole wedding and all that stuff. So then she's like, um, how she started telling the story, how basically, oh my God, my battery's dying. I'm about to switch to my laptop. How one time she always tells a story and it's what I'm getting to. Like she always, she always tells a story to people, but I realize when I'm around, or even if I'm not like right in there in her face looking at her while she's telling the story or she knows I'm in the next room she always pause at a certain time at a, at a, at a, a certain moment or it like she's not telling the whole story so now she tells a story how that I always hear before this part one day she goes to the bathroom the door is locked she unlocks the bathroom she because she he never unlocked. I'm the only person that always locked the door because my I don't know it's a habit for me I don't matter where I'm at I'm always gonna lock the door even if I know I'm safe I'm always gonna lock the door wherever where any room that I go in so she goes in the bathroom goes to the bathroom and the door is locked she tries, so she unlocks it her Scorpio ass <laughs> my mom is so Scorpio is so funny but she unlocks the door because she's like what the hell going on up in here you know like why are you locking the door for it's weird and um, picks up her his phone I think at the time he's taking a shower picks up his phone what's my phone what what's on this phone a zoomed in picture of my tits yep I'm so glad I can say this now without you know, the tears does feel like coming a little bit right now but I'm so glad I can say this now without feeling as disgusted as I did when I first heard it I felt so disgusted. I felt so violent. I, I don't even know the words to explain it. And then I and then I also felt like, how can I feel this way if nothing ever happened? And this is where astrology comes into play, right? Because I learned about my Chiron. Your Chiron is like your healing, your pain, like you know things that you go through and shit like that, whatever case it be. Just sum it up in the best way. I don't know. And how does be the mind is on Scorpio? So it, it's just. Self-explanatory that most of my pain in my life would come from my mother and it's, it is true a lot of it All of it everything actually links back to my mother, but again, I'm, this is not to bash her because uh, we've grown You know, I'm better. She's better I learned why it had to happen and she learned why things happen in her personal life and why she was a certain way and we're getting better at that but I realized that a lot of it came root to my mother and one thing that they said when I looked into it actually was that people with that um would either these, these people are i'm gonna read it to y'all right now actually so you know i'm not crazy hold on i can't find it but i will and then i'll post it on the thing but basically when i read that it just opened a freaking like for me because i'm like this is how i feel and i feel even worse because i'm like nothing happened and i'm and i know nothing happened because one who my mother is because she would kill her before i did I, I feel honestly yeah actually I'm wrong about that I'm not gonna give her too much like credit because the main thing that hurt me about it is that right after when she says that my uncle's girlfriend was like so Lexi you never been to win the flat tire and the shower like you know like you didn't do anything about it and the look on her face was just like taking her back like she was like she didn't have somebody to say that to her but that's what I'm thinking like you know so why like why was he still in the house after that like I didn't know that was well, that's what you found and then all the times like you know beating me and and um punishing me or, or grounding me for having attitude problems with him or whatever case may be but you knew the whole time who he was what he was doing towards me or lusting off of your child like you know and that's what really hurt me and then when I spoke to her about it I actually said you know I understand if you stayed for blah 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 such and such amount of reasons and I don't know, she was like, oh, it wasn't for that. And then she was like, I, I think I was saying something about protecting me. And she was like, oh, oh, I don't need to protect you. I don't need to protect you. 
So that, I mean, even just still hearing that today, it kind of, it does hurt even though we're in a different place, but it's like, that was sad, because that's not even the first time I heard that from somebody that's supposed to, like, love me so much. The second person was my ex that I left, like, why do I need to protect you? Like, it just keeps showing me that I'm, it, like, it honestly shows me that I need to learn how to heal. It showed me. It taught me that I, I needed to learn to love myself and heal myself and protect myself, because I can't rely on people that's supposed to be doing it to do that for me. And I feel this way, this way because, yeah, as much like the fact that I want to be a mother, like I want to be a mom so bad that now I'm like patient with whenever it comes. But half the reason why I want to be a mother so bad growing up is because of what I didn't receive from my own mother and what I wanted to give to my children. And the main thing I wanted to do was prote protect my children. Like they're not even going to be on the Internet when they're born. Like I don't think anybody's going to know I have children until I want to know I have kids. Like because that's how much I'm going to go that far to protect them. So to hear that, you know, like that's like the you know and then she was defensive and like we, were, we actually turned into an argument it actually turned into an argument when i called it the next day to talk about it and i was crying and like really distraught about, about it or whatever it was like you know um then i right after i called my dad and spoke to him about it and he helped me feel better but it made me that even made me realize too in the sense like why nothing ever like was said because how my dad felt I even want to tell him because i felt like i failed him which is so weird to feel but i feel like i failed him by knowing that I feel like he failed me, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like he felt like he should have been there, but it's like, but it's not your fault. <laughs> like, you know, it's not. It wasn't your fault. And and even though it was my mother, but it's still also not her fault either because I don't know what she went through that allowed her to think that it was fine to say, oh, I don't need to protect you, or I feel like she didn't want to do that because I honestly felt like she didn't want to. That's why she said that because... Growing up, I always felt like my mom didn't like me. And she I, she said it. I said it in my podcast before. Like, we came a long way. We came a very, very, very long way. But I learned the word despise because my mother said it to me when I was really, really young before I even met him. That was part of the reason why I wanted to commit suicide. I think I wrote that in my note. So it's like, there were so much things where it's like, I, it's... Yeah, like, there was um, so many things. I have to switch to my laptop since my battery died. That, um... There was just so much things in the air that made me, made everybody have mixed emotions about it. Because it's like, how do you, you can't even blame, but then you can, and then you can't, and then you can, and then this person's also hurting, and then they were also hurting, and you, I don't know if you felt this way because this person was less than off of your child, so you're hurting from that instead of, you know, like, there's so much different aspects as to why things transpired the way how it did. Point, point blank period, you know? And... I'm even able to talk about all this stuff now because it's like it made me who I am today. That's it. Like I, I can't not regret it. I would actually. It sounds crazy, but I, I wouldn't re. I would if I had to redo my life. I would redo it the same way that I did. Because it made me who I am today. Maybe I'll change one tiny thing, but I can't. I don't want to say that because it's like that one tiny thing that you change could make your life completely different. So I can't even say that. But I was meant to like you know have the father that's there and support that I need but not physically and then the mother that's not there, that's there physically but not emotionally and mentally whatever psychologically because it's it was up to me to build that part that I'm missing in myself that's it that's how I see it I can't it wasn't for me to rely on it like yeah she's supposed to be my mother, my mother and she's supposed to protect me or whatever but not everybody's mother to protect them and that's not to, like, discredit or excuse that, you know, that like she should have, but it's just a fact. Like, there's people that have mothers who are just drug users, and all they do is drink all day or or smoke all day and don't do anything, and there are other sisters or siblings to take care of each other. Like, you know, the people that's in situations like that. So for me to, like, say that, nah, I don't know, I fully blame her, I don't know. I just, I don't know. And it's crazy because at one point that's really what it was. Like, I fully blamed her, but now it's like I can't. I can't fully blame you for something that you didn't know how to process yourself or for all I know you're still processing because you may have went through the same thing for all I know and now it's happening with your child so if I didn't deal with it with myself how am I why would I deal with it for you if somebody didn't protect me then why am I going to protect you hurt people hurt people and sometimes we don't even notice when we're doing it but that's why it's the whole you know this is the whole big deal about breaking generational traumas and curses and things like that because I'm not going to turn into what I went through. I'm not going to turn into what my mother went through. I'm going to be the complete opposite because I want to be there for my my future children. I want to be there to support them. I want them to come and tell me things and not be like, 
they're going to leave in an argument or they're going to leave grounded or they're going to get beaten by sharing their, you know, their opinions or whatever. Or, you know, they feel like they don't deserve respect because they're not adults, but you're a human. You deserve everything that you are supposed to receive because you're human. We all deserve everything. You know, there's someone on this planet that is more or less than the other. We're all equal. And if you don't see it that way, then that's the problem. That's where it lies because we're literally all equal. So, <sighs> it's just a lot. It's just a lot. I feel like I'm missing out so much. But like I said, I just wanted to get the main things out there. My story about it, about him. And um, what couldn't or could have not happened, thankfully. Thank the most high. And yeah, because it's just not okay. And the main reason why I'm saying this too is because... Um, oh, before I even say that. And then uh, one, I saw him only one time. He's here, like probably a little bit after we moved here whatever. And she made me... I was home alone. I did not, I really had clothes on because I don't, y'all know Chanel right now. I don't like clothes. Like, I really had clothes on. And I, I just dragged on, put on, threw on some shorts and a t shirt. And I went to go grab whatever it was from him. I think it was a stupid CD, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was a stupid ass CD that she really asked him to bring over there. I think it was the CDs. I don't know. I'm Don't quote me on that, like I said. But, um, and first thing that he says, well, first of all, first of all, first of all, first of all, <laughs> first thing that he does is look at me, not in my face, but my body. And then he goes, oh, hi, oh, how you doing? You lost a lot of weight. Why is that your, why is that your business? Why does that matter to you? Why are you coming to my body? Like, there was times we went on vacation. We went on a family vacation in um, 2014, I believe it was, to Orlando. And, yeah, it was 2014 because I was, like, a, I think a junior. I think it was before my surgery. It was before my surgery, yeah. That was a, it was a big deal because it was before I did my surgery, if I'm not mistaken. And was it really? That's kind of crazy. Was it all that in that same year? I don't remember that. But I feel like it was. Either way, there was a bunch of times where I, I like I'm leaving the resort. I'm about to go to the pool or something with my cousins or whatever. And I get to like one time, I don't know where they were going, but he was in the car. And the driver's seat or some shit. I mean, the passenger seat was somebody. And I was talking to somebody, whoever was in the car. I think it was my uncle or I don't know. And this nigga is literally staring at my boobs. Literally just staring at it. And I I had to grab my, my um my towel and just be like. Because, what, like, really? It was just, I don't know. It was just so much things. Like, I can't, I wish I could say every single thing. Because there's a lot of shit I know that I blocked out that, that was so bizarre and traumatic like, for me to hear or like deal with or whatever. But it, it is what it is, honestly. As long as I got enough out, people understand, like, some person that this person is. And the main thing, like I'm saying, I'm getting to while I'm talking about it is because the last thing I did see on him, I don't even know how long ago this was, but my mom had showed me a picture of him with a whole, with um, a new family. It looked like he's dating this new woman, and the family is full of girls. The, the, the women have, like, three daughters or so. And I just felt so disgusted and, like, I, mean, I wish I could say something to her. I wish I could say something. I I, I would have. Trust me. You, you I would have. But I didn't. I think I don't think I could have found um her Facebook or I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the case was. I know my mom showed it to me. I ain't go looking for it. So I don't know. But yeah. Yep. That's the story of my years from like third grade to my senior year of high school living with a pedophile. And. I think I brush a lot. I really want to cry, but of course I'm going to cry at the end. I think a lot of that situation, like, shaped my, like, life to where it is now. Especially my love life. Oh, my God. Of course it does. That's what I'm getting to. See, look at how funny it is. Because it did. It did. But I'm, in the, I th I'm talking about it in the sense that I think it did more than what I think, what I know it did. But what it definitely did do for me, like, for example, getting yeah, to, like, the psychological part is, like, nothing happened because, again... I was feisty as hell. So even if you tried and my mom wasn't going to protect me, I was going to protect myself. Like I'm saying, I would have been in juvie or jail, whatever, especially after hearing what, what happened with my cousins, like you staring at them. But 
nothing happened, but it was like it's annoying to feel like something did. Like I don't know, that's why I'm sharing my story because it's like not only to out the, the whole situation and you know and whatever, but it's like people probably went through the same thing I did, but and we didn't necessarily get touched or anything. But it's equivalent to it sometimes in our in our brain. Like for me, it's equivalent to me because I just I feel so disgusted. Like I feel so nasty sometimes. Like at the times when I would think about it, like I just I don't want to like I don't know. I wish I could erase it out of my brain, but I can't. Um, that's what fucked me up for a lot. Like when I was with my ex for the one I just left, he like the, I mean. A part of it was also his performance, like how good he was, honestly. I'll be real about that. But most of the time when I received oral, I didn't like it. I felt disgusted. I like pushed him away and I had to tell him after a while like why I would feel that way. I think I told him that same moment when I like ran to my room crying because the first person I called was him to tell him like what my mom just said right in front of me and think that was just so natural to say. And then me hearing the other person like, oh, why didn't you do this and that? Like to defend your child, whatever. I would have killed him or whatever. That was my daughter type of thing. I called him first and I told him what happened. I think I told him that same moment, like, this is why I feel the way how I do certain times during sexual intercourse because it just makes you feel like not um in in the like towards the end when I was with him, but in the beginning definitely and the middle ish kind of, I would sometimes see his face on my ex's face, and that used to disgust me like. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, my God. I don't know. I just, I don't know. It just makes me feel, like, disgusted. I guess it does still bother me, but... I don't know. It, it's more, it just makes me cry more in a sense now, I guess. Because it's like, why did they go through that? Like, that's how I feel. Like, why did they deal with that shit? And, like, had this thing, like, over me? Because... I know I healed from it, but there's times where obviously you don't heal fully from nothing. There's times when things would trigger you. So even though I feel like I healed from it, there may be a time that like I'm not with my the person I'm supposed to marry and I'm with my husband and I feel weird because he's giving me oral. Even if you, I may not know if it's because a person may be that good or not oral. I mean, it could just be just because and it'll just pop up out of nowhere. And now I feel disgusted and now I'm closing my legs. I don't want to do anything. Like I don't want to do nothing. That's how I feel. Like, it just makes me feel disgusted. I don't know. I don't know. So, it is what it is. I tried to figure out there's a way that I could put him on a sex offender list or some shit, but he didn't do anything to my, as far as I know, to anybody. So, I can't do that. But I just don't like things like this. This is why, like, I, I, take, I make a big deal when it comes to, like, trafficking and... Like, when it comes to children, and it's just children. Children. Like, yes, adults are important, too, like, you know, what we go through. But children, I would kill for people, for a stranger's child. I mean, I have so little discipline now. But in a position, God forbid, I hope I don't get in a position like that. Because I would. I would. I don't I don't like things like that when it comes to children. It does it it disgusts me. And then on top of that, the, the part that bothers me, too, is that people, everybody in my family knew. But me, I'm my brother, my brother knew and he didn't tell me, but I understand his point of view why he didn't tell me. But everybody else in my family knew, in my family knew and they still treated me like I'm the villain as like I'm this and that because I'm disrespectful to Desmond or I'm this and that blah 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 yada yada yada. And that's the problem with this community like and it's not just Caribbeans or anything it's in general. But I see it more common, a lot more so in, in the Caribbean and black community. We would sit there and gatekeep or like hush, hush, hush when it comes to like these dutty um, pedophiles or men that is less than off of people that they shouldn't be less than off of or whatever. Like 40-year-old men. To me, even like a 40-year-old man that's interested in a 20-year-old, I don't care. If you're somebody that's like that, that's, you're weird to me because I'm seeing it as, as a 20-year-old and like you were... I don't take things, like, I don't care if, the, if they're adults. To me, it's weird. If I meet a man and he tells me that he's, if I meet a man, even if something like this, a man that's, like, 30 years old or, like, 26 years old and he's interested in a girl that's, like, 19 to 21, 21 is okay because she could drink at least. But it still gives me kind of, like, weird vibes. I don't, it gives me weird vibes. Anything from 18 to 20 is weird. So, unless you're, like, two years older than that age, I feel like it's weird. Well, I just be... That's what I'm saying. Like, a lot of things really 
shift my mindset because of that situation, like, what I find strange. And instead of calling things out, nobody does that. You're just going to sit around, oh, yeah, yeah, he was weird. Blah, blah, and it just stays in the family and just hush, hush, hush around or whatever. It stays in the community and hush, hush around. I'm not, I'm not somebody that's going to hush, hush nothing. I knew eventually I would talk about this. I didn't know how. I didn't know it was even going to be a YouTube channel. But I knew I would somehow, some way, because it, it bothered me that freaking much as a child. Like, I still feel the dirty-ass prickle of his dirt, stupid beard when he kissed me on my cheek when I didn't ask him to do that. I still, I literally still feel every single thing and I'm still in every single scenario where everything happened because it's like I can just take myself back to these memories and it doesn't matter if it's good or bad. I can always put myself in a position as if I was still there at the moment. Like, it's just, I don't know. Ugh, oh boy. I don't know, man. It just sucks. Because I think I also cry sometimes, like, even right now, because it's, like, it's not just about me. I'm thinking about people that actually went through shit and how they feel. Like, that's, I don't want to know what it feels like to be, like, you know, assaulted. But that alone, for me to feel this way and I have not been, like, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, I don't even want to know. And like, it's, like, people out there are going through worse. And I actually, I know, actually, I do know. It's sad because I think... I'm not going to talk about her story, but I know somebody that's really close to me that I think um, she definitely did mention something like that. And now thinking about it, like you dealt with that and... Oh. These are the moments, honestly, it's like when I say I love the world, these are moments that make me say that I hate it sometimes, like honestly, but I have to remember that, you know, there's good and bad, there's a balance. It is what it is, you know? So... I don't know. All I can say is that if you're somebody that's like, you know, currently going through it, I'll say that. If you're someone who's like, you know, going through this and you feel like you don't want to talk about it, please talk about it. I don't care. Don't care about people's not going to believe you. Don't care if they're not going to believe you. Don't care. And we like, it's sad that in, even in today's world, we're still dealing with this. That, oh, she's lying. Oh, it's just for the money or this and that. Like, I don't even care if it's pop culture. Like, just in general, if a woman is saying that this is happening to her, why would you be lying about that? And the women that do lie about that, that even annoys me even more because it's like you're literally washing out the the real stories or making it making these situations worse where they don't believe us. So, you know, if you're gonna do some, some type of scandal, lie about some other some other shit. Don't bring sexual assault into it. Don't do that because you're just literally discrediting everybody else's stories by doing that. So, oh man, this is heavier than I expected. I didn't think it was actually going to bother me that much, but it did. And that's okay. Because it's about how you move on. And I don't allow things to, like, keep me down. That's one thing about me. Like, everything I've been through in my life, like, I don't... I could cry about it as much as I can. But I don't allow it to keep me in a place where I'm going to cry about it and then just stay in a hole. I want to crawl under a rock and just stay there and cry. Like, no. I'll cry and I'm going to still be... I'll be flying a plane. I'll cry and do that. I'll, I'll cry and go to um, pilot school. I'll cry and go, and go learn how to build my business. Like, I'm still going to do what I need to do when still feel the emotions of what I need to feel because at the end of the day, these situations are what brought me to where I am right now. So, I mean, it's unfortunate, but it is, it's a fact, you know? I can't hide that part. So, yeah. I hope I'm not missing anything. I don't think so. Shoot, if I need to, I wouldn't make a part two because I don't care. I'll keep talking about these type of things to like to to the end of the world on the top of the mountain. I would shout my my voice because, I, like I said, I don't play when it comes to these type of things, especially when it comes to like children and parents and things like that. Like, I don't know how I would ever protect my child from this, but I would do it the best way I can. Like, I'm not if if God forbid, like me and my her, you know, their children. Because it even could be a son. If my son or my daughter, like, let's say I'm not with their father in the future, I'm not just going to bring around anybody anybody without doing a background search on you, thorough background search, testing you out to see what kind of, where your mindset is when it comes to children and pedophilia and things like that. Like, I'm going to ask certain questions that I'm going to, I'll be able to know where your, where your mindset is. So I do it now when I'm dating. I, I'm, I know who are the creeps and I know who are not. So... I'm just, you know, this, this is the best I can do. It's just, I don't know. But yeah, that's my story, y'all. 
And like I said, if you're going through this, if you are going through this, you could talk to me too. Like, honestly, I would love to, you know, help people who are going through things like this. Like, I know I'm probably not in the best position because, you know, I didn't really, like, nothing fully happened to me. But psychologically and emotionally, I feel like I can empathize with you in those sense that I understand. And if nobody's going to listen to you, then I would. And if they go to you, I would, and I will share it for you. Because I don't play. I'm always going to be somebody's advocate. Okay. Like, even one of them, like, my cousins, one of my cousins that actually was, um, that I mentioned that he saw, I went through a whole court case with her, what, last year, two years ago, whatever. Two years ago, I think it was. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, two years ago. And... I try to get custody of her. Am I in position to get custody, especially two years ago, of her? No, not. But I tried my best of what I could do, and me doing that actually helped in a big, tremendous way in some way. Actually, it helped tremendously. It helped tremendously. I didn't think it did, but now I'm thinking about it, it actually did. Because I, I just tried to do whatever I can, because nobody else was going to do it. Nobody else was really listening to her. Nobody was, was believing in her, um, her story. But I'm going to believe it. And I'm going to make sure that it's heard and make sure that she's safe. And I tried to do that as much as I can. I, I could have while she was in my vicinity. So I don't know. So don't think I won't fight for you if you think, you know, you you don't got nobody on your side. I don't care if I don't know you. I will literally fight for you. So anyway, I love you guys. And I hope that this video helped you in some way, somehow. Um. Like I said, you, again, I'm keep reiterating it. If you're going through this, do not feel like you don't, you shouldn't speak. You should always speak. Don't get, keep nobody, no matter who it is in your family, especially if it's somebody in your family, especially if it's somebody in your family. Do not gatekeep this person. Don't do that. You had to scream from the top of the roof. And if you don't, I will. I'll do something anonymous if you that makes you feel better. Because that's this not, it's not okay. Anyways, again, I love you guys. Bye. Bye.